Hey there everybody, my name is Grant Reed from African Guide Academy and I'd like to introduce you to the Botswana Wildlife app. So let's jump right into the app and see what this app is about. Okay, so as I open the app I find on the left hand side my main menu in list view. Since I love birds, let's start there. There are over 300 of Botswana's common and prominent birds featured in the app at the moment. It has opened birds in list view and this allows you very quickly to scroll alphabetically all the way from a palis down to wren warbler. But let's say for a moment you don't know what you're looking at. You can click this top right button here and open it in a thumbnail view. Now when we open it in thumbnail view you get the larger icons and you can flick through these images and come close to the species that you're busy looking at. Click on that and now once you've opened the species, you can move backwards and forwards using these bottom arrows. So let's jump into something nice and easy, the batelure. As you can see, there's a few different photographs of different forms of the bird. There's the in-flight photographs, the male, the female, the juvenile. And down at the bottom here, we've got the icon for the distribution map. Look, click on that and we'll see that this bird occurs throughout Botswana. Curious what it sounds like? Just click the sound icon and uh, we can listen to the call. Okay, so now let's add this to our list. When you're done with your safari, you can export this list as a CSV. You can email it, share it, um, and it's a great record of the trip that you had. So for some of these species that are a little bit more difficult to identify, such as the pipits, We've put the salient features on the image itself just to save you from having to read through a long ream of text. And obviously a section you're all going to want to use frequently is the mammals. So you can type in the species you're looking for in the quick search or you can scroll through the groups. All the sections can be opened in list or in thumbnail view. Mammals are grouped in their orders starting with the even-toed ungulates going all the way down through the carnivores, hares, bats, rodents, etc. When you find the group that you're looking for, click on one of them and scroll left or right to find your match. Aha, so what we're looking at here is a reed buck. There we go. So again, we have the distribution map. We can see that this occurs in northern Botswana and where available also the calls. If you keep scrolling to the right of the image, you will find the track of the animal. Down the bottom of the text, there's also some cool fun facts to add a little bit of value to your sighting and so you can learn a little bit more about the cool animals that you're looking at. Invertebrates are a very diverse section. So to make life easier, we've put them into major categories, beetles, spiders. Let's jump into dragonflies and damselflies. Going down to damselflies, here we've got the cat's head sprite and again, where we've been able to, we've put the text onto the image itself so that it helps you with an easy identification. Okay, so another monster group is plants. To make life easier, you can select the color of a flower that you're looking at. Clearly, this one that I'm looking at here is pink. It has a simple leaf. So suddenly we've gone from 114 possible species to just 14. And voila, it's a flay ink flower. With trees I can do exactly the same on leaf structure, so the leaf that I've got here in my hand is bipinnately compound. I'm going to click on that and suddenly I've gone from 62 species of trees, 13 species. And then it's much easier obviously to scroll through this and find the species that you're looking at. There are also reptiles, frogs and grasses, but we're going to skip over those because the functionality is largely the same. Another great feature is my location. Your phone's GPS will tell the app where on the map you are and only bring up the species that occur in that area. You can also manually put in a pin to see what will occur in the area that you are next going to. There are comprehensive notes on how to use the app as well as some rainfall and habitat maps of Botswana. There is a glossary to help you with some of the more difficult scientific terminology. So the obvious question is, what is missing from the app? Well, there's a lot that's missing from the app. The reason for that is Botswana, probably down at the microscopic level, has up to 10,000 invertebrates. 
Uh, there's over 3,000 plants in Botswana. So by adding all of these obscure species, it makes it more difficult for you to find the prominent and the common species that you're encountering on your safari. But that said, with time, as we improve the keys and find better ways and better functionality for the app, we will continue to improve this app year after year. So I really hope that you're going to enjoy using the Botswana Wildlife app and thank you for downloading it.